Hello everyone. We are devastated that we can't see you in person and we hope that this PowerPoint helps you and your child to see what our classrooms look like and the learning that takes place. We know it isn't ideal and we would all prefer to be inviting you and your child in for visits, but we are having to follow government guidance and keep ourselves and our staff safe. Mrs Sayborn is our head teacher who is hugely supportive to the early years team and passionately believes in the need for us to get the foundations of our children's education right by ensuring the learning is solid and embedded so that all that follows builds upon a secure base. Nyland School is very fortunate as Mrs Sayborn is one of those rare head teachers that actually has had experience of teaching in early years herself early in her career which ensures she understands the needs of the children and the staff requirements to meet those needs. You may have spoken to these ladies during the application process and we always think it's nice to see the face that goes with the voice. These ladies are based in a key stage two building and are friendly voices on the end of the phone who have the answers to the questions not relating to education. The administration team also includes Mrs Gemma Mather and Mrs Sam Madison who you will no doubt meet during your child's time at Ninelands. Ms Wednesday Ramsden has led the early years at Nyland since 2004 and has taught for well over 30 years in foundation stage classes across the city but has never lost her passion and enthusiasm for teaching young children. Her own daughters have grown up and one has followed her into the teaching profession. Ms Ramsden welcomes all of the parents of the early years children to contact her if you have any issues, concerns or even positive comments regarding your child or any aspects of school life. She also leads the school's safeguarding team. Miss Daisy Plant is joining us at Nylands this September. She says, I'm really excited to join Nylands and get to know all of the staff and families. I've been teaching in Leeds for four years and before that I taught in China and Hong Kong. I enjoy teaching in early years and key stage one the most. When I'm not at school, I like exercising, taking photos and talking to my two cats. Mrs Melanie Smith works within our early years team supporting both the nursery and reception team. She is an experienced teaching assistant and brings her caring nature, big smile and warm heart to work every day. She helps both teams to expertly deliver the early years curriculum. Melanie has a nursery aged daughter Emily so has a complete picture of both the role of teacher and parent. During the COVID situation, we will be unable to follow some of our usual rules. We are sure you agree that health and safety has to come first. I have left this slide in so that you can see our normal start to a session and the end of the day. Until then, we will encourage the children to come in, say their goodbyes and give you a wave at the reception door and staff will support them. To prevent cross-contamination during the current situation, we are advising parents not to send children with book bags and not to expect pictures and work home, though we will upload these onto the electronic learning journal. We are also advising that if your child brings a packed lunch, that it is in a disposable bag that staff can throw away after use. This is when the electronic register is taken. Later, as the children settle, we will introduce a phonics lesson at this time too, when the children practice naming the alphabet letters by sound and later by name as well. We introduce a new sound every day and when we have covered them all, revisiting them then daily, we teach them diagraphs, two letter sounds that make one sound such as We will ensure we share more information regarding our phonics lessons and also keeping you informed in advance which sounds we are teaching so you can support the learning at home. Ordinarily, both class one and class two work together as a whole reception team. The teachers plan together to ensure there is a consistency between the bays and they invite the children to interact with all the children and adults in the reception base. However, to ensure your child is safe during COVID, the children are being taught in bubble groups with no more than 15 children in each smaller group and they share the resources within that group, but not with the other bubbles. The staff, however, will continue to work together during the planning process. The children are invited to choose whether to work indoors or out and obviously many choose the latter. As this is currently the safest option due to Covid, we are encouraging the children to spend time outside. 
We are very fortunate that we have so many wonderful resources and activities outside and so much space. Please label everything your child brings or wears in school. 30 children, most the same size, all wearing the same clothes, means that unlabeled clothing is very difficult to match back to your child. Here are just a few teacher-led activities that your child will be invited to try. Reading and sharing a book one to one with a teacher. As the year progresses, this becomes guided reading, which is explained on the next slide. Learning writing skills using a variety of contexts, such as writing a shopping list, writing about your favourite toy, writing thank you letters, drawing story maps and adding labels, etc. Maths work learning to accurately and carefully count and understand what number is one more or one less than learning how to add and take away, etc. Exploring equipment and finding out about materials and sorting them into groups. Learning paint techniques such as mixing powder paint, learning how to print or use stencils. Making Play-Doh when core restrictions allow. Exploring 2D and 3D shapes, describing them and comparing them using the correct vocabulary. Playing a game to embed turn-taking, listening to others, sharing skills and coping with winning and losing. Describing games such as making a grid and telling a teacher where an object has been placed by using positional language. When COVID restrictions lift, we will be able to send books home again. In the meantime, we are fortunate to also have electronic books that teachers can allocate to children in their class for you to access at home. We can also ensure that you know what letters, sounds and words we are teaching in school for you to be able to reinforce and look in your own books at home. We will begin this as children confidence grows, so please read as much as you can with your children. When they are able to read some words by recognising letters and knowing the sounds they make so that they can segment the word or sound it out, they will then begin to realise by blending these sounds together means they are able to read. These are popular with the children, especially when parents support us in this too by asking their child what challenges they have completed that day. We then count each class's sticks and have a mini competition to see which class has won with the most challenges completed that week. We would always request your support in ensuring your child is toilet trained prior to starting in our reception classes, unless there are any special needs preventing this, in which case we will work with you to put in place what is necessary for your child. Now, during COVID, more than ever, it is essential that your child is as self-sufficient as possible at the toilet, and we ask if in between now and your child starting, you work on their independent skills. It is more important than ever for there to be a good link between home and school to ensure your child settles quickly and becomes a confident and happy learner and develops a love of school. We hope you will join us in using various forms of communication to share information and will use a range such as texts, emails, video links, phone calls, etc. Please know that your concerns, questions or comments are highly valued by us and we urge you to contact us using one of the methods listed whilst we are unable to communicate face to face. The first three areas of development, PSE, Communication and Language and Physical, have been recognised as the prime areas. 
These are what you have as parents instinctively recognised as the most important areas to develop from your child's birth. You are constantly looking to see if they could give eye contact, smile, laugh, follow a finger with their eyes, grab things, make babbling noises, begin to lift their heads, roll over, smile, etc. And as such, we early years practitioners recognise the same too. We will be observing and noting children who seem below, at or above the expected norm for their age in these areas and will be sharing any concerns with you within the first weeks of your child start starting. For example, if we notice they struggle to hear, have speech difficulties, struggle when running or find communication with others hard, I think we can all agree that unless we support children with their basic needs and skills, then they are more likely to struggle to access the other four areas of development. This remains the most vital area of development. If a child is not secure, feeling safe and is happy, they are going to need to put support to cope with being in school. We recognise due to COVID, this may take a little longer than usual, hence the need for our staff to speak to you one to one prior to your child starting. The more information you can give us, the better. We may well be the experts on early years education, but you are the experts on your child, so we must work as a team. It is normal for very young children who are just four years old to play alongside others and observe their play before copying it or joining in. When they are confidently ready, they will interact with another child, asking for a resource, offering something or even telling them their name. We again recognise due to COVID, children who have not been around peers may have slipped back with their social skills, so staff will recognise the need to support all children to rebuild these skills. The ability to sit, listen and concentrate are skills that the children develop throughout the time in reception. We start off with short periods in the early days and build up to longer. The children are encouraged to listen to staff and each other. We request that during COVID children do not bring items from home to show and tell but hope to enable them to do this when it is safe to do so. Talking is a vital skill. We model complete sentences and encourage the children to speak in whole sentences too, just as we are sure you do at home, e.g. ensuring from being small, instead of saying more, they say, please can I have some more milk. As the year progresses, we encourage the children to verbalise their understanding by giving us an answer and a reason. For example, I know it is four because it comes after three. We also encourage them to answer how and why questions rather than just who, what and where questions. For example, how did you get there? How did you make that? Why do you think he's sad? Etc. A variety of physical skills being explored both indoors and out. The children have a weekly PE lesson when they change into PE kits and exercise and learn games. During the COVID situation, we are going outdoors to do our PE lessons rather than going into the school hall. Our outdoor area has a trim trail with monkey bars A-frames and balancing equipment and is also huge, giving the children room to run. Here are some children developing their muscles outside by jumping between tyres and riding trikes. The hall is set up for a PE lesson using the large apparatus. Fine motor skills. It is vital for the children to develop their finger muscles so when they spend longer time writing and drawing their hand muscles are ready. We have a finger gym in reception which has a weekly challenge. These challenges include Threading beads, making peg patterns, using hammer beads, punching holes in paper and leaves to thread string, balancing games, picking up small items with tweezers and fingers, cutting skills, 
making pictures inspired by famous artists, e.g. Kandinsky circles, cutting shapes to make a Pokemon, and making trancing artwork and taking photo of it with an iPad. We encourage a love of books, of rhymes, stories, factual books, electronic reading, and for children to retell us what they have read, talk about the character and how they may be feeling, predict what might happen next, look for any letters we already know, and to listen for rhyming words. Children are encouraged to have a go at reading words and to use skills learned in their phonics lessons when sharing a book with an adult. We also encourage the children to make marks using a variety of materials to develop their finger grip and control, to explore and experiment with marks. We enhance the reception areas of provision to provide inspirations for the children to write with meaning. For example, we put list performers in the dinosaur area to encourage children to have a go at writing a list of dinosaurs. We also provide lots of small paper fold over book templates to encourage children to make their own books of their own choosing or on a theme. We set up shops, clinics and other role play areas and offer various templates for writing menus, shopping lists, letters, envelopes and receipts. As the year go by, the children use their phonics skills and their understanding of letters and their sounds to be able to write labels for toys or pictures and build up to write simple sentences independently. Here are just a few examples of the reading challenges the children have had to complete to achieve a red challenge stick. They include reading a book to a friend, reading a sentence and match it to the right picture, read the words in the hoops and peg the right letter. Here are some excellent examples of the children proudly showing us their independent writing. This develops throughout the year and is something we constantly encourage. We teach them how to hear sounds in words and remind them how to form the letters using the ditties e.g. Maisie, Mountain, Mountain when writing a letter M. We share all this information with parents to ensure you can reinforce this learning at home too. We have some fantastic resources to encourage number awareness, counting, number recognition, number bonds. For example, different ways to make six, using three and three, two and four, five and one, six and zero. We have purposely provided some of our maths areas, but I've also added lots around other areas such as sand and water and lots outdoors. The children are taught how to form letters correctly. Again, we will share with you all the ditties we find really help. Here you can see the children using something called a par whole model, where the total amount is put in a large whole circle and the ways that make that amount into the smaller two part circles. We develop the children's natural curiosity and eagerness to explore by providing a host of resources and modelling a variety of activities to encourage their solid understanding of sizes and shape. We work on the correct terminology, encouraging the children to move beyond describing size by using big and little to use in the appropriate mathematical language, such as longer, longest, taller, tallest, shorter, shortest, heavier, heaviest, lighter, lightest, almost, nearly half full, etc. Understanding the world covers the areas of the curriculum that you will recognise as science, geography, history and ICT. This covers all the ways the children explore and investigate and find out about the world around them. We offer as many first-hand experiences as we can, such as looking at our tadpoles, going hunting for signs of autumn and collecting leaves and experiencing the seasonal changes such as having fun in the snow. We ask the children to talk about what they have learnt and encourage them to ask questions and give educational guesses to what may happen. The children are encouraged to use their imaginations when they are playing with small world toys, making up stories alone or with friends, when they are in role play or in the pretend house or one of the many new areas we have created for them, such as a vet, an alien spaceship, a shop etc. They are invited to explore using a variety of materials and resources. Here are some of our children designing, creating 
and being imaginative and learning new skills. The old electronic system used previously in our nursery and reception will be accessible for a further few months, but we strongly recommend anyone who attended our nursery and used the Exiat system to ensure you save your child's journal, maybe best transform into a PDF file, as these will no longer be accessible in 2021. We are moving to the tapestry system to share your child's learning with you through photographic and video evidence and would love you to do the same, sharing your child's experiences and learning out of school too. We are looking forward to talking to all families who are starting in Nylands in 2020. We will have a phone call with parents and a quick chat with your child if they would like this. If your child already attends our nursery, you will have completed the paperwork already. We urge you to let us know if you have any changes to your data collection sheet. 